So in episode seven of Dabs, our second to last episode before the season finale next week, I would argue that this is one of the most impressive episodes of TV I've seen in a long time regarding the technical aspect. We say goodbye to some of my favorite characters, and this episode really does dive into the conversation. Do we have free will or are things predetermined? We're going to talk about that and much more. Episode 7 of Devs. The Devs team perfect the system and Forrest and Katie wait for the completion of the Devs project. Lily and Jamie try to avoid its threats, but a visit from Kenton leaves Lily with no choice. Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to Movie Files. Back again with my weekly breakdown, review, and recap of the latest episode of FX on Hulu Devs. Our second to last episode, I can't believe next week will be the finale of one of my most uh, uh, favorite shows of 2020 so far. I've been so impressed with this season and I'm excited to be here to talk about episode 7, which was a great episode in my opinion. And we're going to break it down in the spoiler discussion. Before we do so, as you all can see on the screen now, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel, hit that bell so you don't miss any of my new content also make sure you give this video a thumbs up really helps out the channel but also really appreciate it if you're not already make sure you're following me on all my social media accounts and last but not least guys if and when you've seen this latest episode of devs what did you think about it? I mean, this was a mind-bending sci-fi drama episode with just one of the most beautiful episodes of TV I've seen on a technical level. I, I just loved it, but I want to know what you all thought of the episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So again, guys, I have been impressed with this season so far. I, as I mentioned in my very first review, I'm a huge Alex Garland fan, uh, Ex Machina, Annihilation. I just think he has a great eye for sci-fi, but also a great eye in telling the human story. You know, obviously he's, he's diving into these science fiction aspects of reality and, and uh, you know, AI and everything that we got from him so far in his career. But, you know, one of the things that he doesn't leave out is the human element and the groundedness of these stories. And I thought that that was truly displayed in this episode. Again, as I had mentioned up top, this was one of the most technically impressive episodes of TV I've seen. Maybe since, I said in a long time, but I, now I come to think about it, one of the most impressive episodes of TV I saw within this last year was if for those that watch Watchmen, which I reviewed on this channel, check it out if you haven't already, uh, was episode, I don't want to say episode five or six, uh, would it involved uh, Angela going back taking the nostalgia uh, pills and we got that whole beautiful episode that's up there with me this particular episode is up there with me in regards to just how the episode starts how the episode finishes the score the cinematography was absolutely masterful and this is why Alex Garland is one of my favorite uh, creators working in a space today and this episode was just beautiful in my opinion the episode opens up with again just some beautiful cinematography we get these kind of shots of san francisco but we also get a shot of people in the cave we we get a couple moments with the people in the cave but we also get this particular quote that i wasn't familiar with so apparently um there was a song by this artist uh this musician uh back in the 1970s i believe his name was steve reich and he pulls a quote from daniel ham who i wasn't familiar with uh this this whole situation took place but daniel ham back in the 1960s 19 1965 or 1964 him and a couple other African Americans were accused of murder and his quote was as it as they say in the as the episode opens I had to like open a bruise up and let the blood come out to show them so I, as I was listening to that quote and as I looked it up the more and more I think about this episode this kind of goes hand in hand in regards to obviously Daniel Ham was referring to the um, you know the social rights issues that he was going through with the police during that time and being falsely accused of murder and being locked in jail for over eight years uh, and going back to what this theme of this episode kind of touches on is, you know, we have these wrongs that are done upon our characters, but they have to prove their 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 bruises to show the truth, you know? So that kind of dives into what we get with Lyndon's character, uh, what we get into Lily's character, and the whole idea of do we have free will or are things predetermined? And there are certain instances instances in this episode where people have to prove things to show the truth. As we saw with Lily, or I'm sorry, as we saw with Katie and Lyndon, that whole episode, that whole moment that we'll talk about here in a bit. So really great quote. Really great way to open up the episode. And again, the thing I really love about this show is just the conversations that this show kind of brings to the forefront in regards to, again, this is a beautiful story in regards to, I love a, a good murder mystery. You know, we see in Lily on her justice of journey or, or, or journey of justice to figure out what happened to Sergey uh, and, you know, and bring everything to light. But we're also seeing this fascinating sci-fi uh, discussion in regards to uh, things being predetermined, things being destined to happen versus us having free will and making choices as we see with some of our characters like Pete. So 
Again, just a great episode and a lot of good big themes that I that I loved about this episode. And again, let me know some of the stuff that you guys pulled from this episode. Again, from the Daniel Ham quotes uh, to the idea of free will versus predetermined uh, uh, things happening and just so much more through this episode. Let me know you guys' thoughts. So again, within this episode, we get uh, very early on a different perspective of that accident that happened to Amaya and his, you know, and Forrest's wife, who someone had mentioned in the comments last week is Forrest's wife dead? Because we we don't officially know if she is, but I think that they pretty much have, that storyline probably is pretty much tied up, that she did die in the car accident, but that would be interesting if she does appear in the finale for whatever reason, but I think that she is dead, but Either way, we see in that scene the reason why Forrest has so much regret of that situation and wants to kind of undo that situation, as we might find out in the season finale next week. But we see that he kind of blames himself because his wife, we see the conversation on the phone. She's like, I'm only 30 seconds away. We can talk about it when I get there. He's like, no, let's just talk about it now. And as she has mentions in the, in the moment there that she doesn't like to talk on the phone while driving, hence car accident their death and force kind of has that weight inside of him so I kind of like that perspective because obviously this whole season we've been thinking that he you know he wants to bring his daughter back he, he feels bad for what happens but now we kind of see why he feels bad because he partly has a you know it's kind of his fault in regards to that conversation that's being had that he could just wait 30 seconds until they got home that he had to have the conversation there and obviously we saw what happened there. So we see Stewart shows off. Uh, the devs project is now finished. It's complete. It's up and running. Uh, you know, we see Stewart in this episode tells Forrest in his face that we went against everything you told us. We went with Lyndon's, uh, you know, uh, idea and, and injected that into the program and it is fully functional. And we see, you know, these devs uh, team, some characters that I don't think we've seen so far this season. Obviously the devs team that we've seen on screen has been Stewart, Lyndon, uh, obviously Forrest and Kate but we see their reaction to the dev system and obviously I think it's a very human reaction. It's a reaction I would have into seeing what they've been doing and doing for the dev system, which is predicting the future, but also going back into the past. And then we see one of the the, uh, the devs team members seeing how things, how it was predetermined that he was going to say what he said, he was going to do what he did. I thought that was just a really good uh, moment because, again, it brings the humanity to that particular moment. Again, we're dealing with sci-fi elements. We're dealing, dealing with these kind of uh, mind-bending concepts and these reality concepts and it's multiverse. Uh, conversations being had within this season but it kind of shows you the humanity in regards to if you brought a you know another person to the situation how they would react to it and we saw that there and I really love that moment so as the episode kind of progresses, we see, um, as I had mentioned last week, Forrest and Katie, they know exactly what's going to happen. You know, we see them talk about, oh, yeah, you know, this is you're going to ha have, have the conversation with Lyndon and how that plays out. You know, I'll see you at the office later today. Again, this, this goes back to what I was mentioning last week in regards to how great a performance we've seen from Nick and also Katie's character in regards to, you know, obviously their characteristics to me are kind of shallow, shallow and they kind of feel robotic at times, but that's just because they kind of know what's going to happen. So I love the different layers that we've gotten from these characters, especially from Forrest, who again, I think has been an Emmy winning performance, in my opinion, in regards to just the layers that we got from Nick Offerman. Again, seeing him from Parks and Rec days and, and seeing him in other things, some other dramatic roles in movies and shows. But this, to me, has been one of his best performances so far in his career. And I've just, just been impressed by his layers of this characteristic that we get from Forrest, being a quote-unquote bad, bad guy, being, uh, cake, you know, as they mentioned last week, uh, um, uh, obsessive, crazy, and all the things that they give him. But he has a human side of him. So I just love, uh, again, the performance that we got from Katie and, and um, you know, and Nick Offerman's character Forrest. So, you know, we see Lily talking to Jamie, and they're trying to have, you know, a, a normal conversation, as Lily calls it, and try to you know Jamie's just trying to like really put his wrap his mind around what just happened this last 48 hours and 24 hours in regards to being afraid for his life getting into all the situations that he is with Lily but now they're back together so it is very confusing for Jamie and they try to you know they have a nice little moment of levity and, and it's in this moment where I'm just like things are not going to play out well for this relationship as we've kind of predicted in the last few weeks as someone predicted last week that the reason why Lily will go back to Dev is because of the death of Jamie which we'll talk about here in a bit but that was just a nice little moment to see them be able to share kind of a normal day without worrying about devs without worrying about the world maybe coming to an end so I kind of like that quieter moment that we get with these two characters so really the meat of the episode to me really the biggest moment in regards to just kind of really breaking down this episode and really just being so impressed by Alice Garland by the writer you know Alice Garland and director of this episode was the conversation that we have 
with Katie and with Lyndon on that dam and on the bridge, you know, because this is, as I had mentioned, we, we say goodbye to some of our favorite characters, and Lyndon is definitely one of my favorite characters. I love the performance that we've gotten so far, but again, Lyndon, one of my favorite characters, um, having a conversation with Katie, and Katie tells him that, you know, Everything you thought so far has been right. The multiverse, Everest uh, interpretation, you're right about all that. And it's really interesting to see Lennon chooses to climb over the railing and act in a, an, an, an act of faith. Uh, and his actions are compared to, you know, walking over a, bu- a bed of, uh, of coal, as they had mentioned. But why exactly did Lennon do that? So we see again Lennon. You know, and Katie tells Lyndon that he is testing his faith of the Everest um, interpretation. And by climbing over the railing, um, it's playing out everything as planned in regards to there's different variations of Lyndon climbing over this rail. As one variation is he falls to his death. Another variation is he lives and he goes back to work at Devs. And it's just such a cool concept in regards to, again, predetermined situations and predetermined the, uh, the future and this is very uh, essential to that character and believing that anything um, you know that you're acting against your will right so I thought that that moment was really really well done again we see these different versions of Lyndon falling to his death and we see none of the versions show him surviving which again kind of goes back to Katie and knowing the future and knowing and predicting everything it's just such a well uh planned out scene again it answers the question about you know the predetermination of everything going on and in a nutshell uh Lennon thinks that he is testing whether he can get to work at devs and his version of reality or not however like I said it's shown multiple times that he dies every single time so just a really really well done moment again we got we got to say goodbye to one of my favorite characters so far in this season and Lyndon uh, uh, but just such a well done scene and just a uh, just a, a really well acted scene and just just so great to see that moment in regards to that conversation they were having there. So another great conversation we have is between Stewart and um, Forrest as we see Forrest going to devs and he quotes uh, Mark Anthony, who I had to look up as well, who's someone that was uh, a very important figure during the Roman. Uh, he's a Roman politician and a general who played a critical part in the transformation of Rome Republic. So again, goes back to the conversation in regards to how uh, Forrest sees himself, kind of this uh, messiah. One that really, really kind of hit me hard within this episode is again, as I had mentioned, some favorite characters we say goodbye to and Jamie was one of them. Again, we see, um, um, you know, Lily and, and Jamie kind of having a moment and, you know, about to share some some breath, some 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 breakfast together. And we see Kenyon breaks into the apartment and he takes him out. He takes out Jamie, shoots him. And, you know, we see that scene kind of play out. Lily, you know, we think that Lily jumps out the window, but she attacks uh, 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 Kenton. And you think that Kenton's going to win and kill Lily, which we knew that probably wasn't going to happen because we know Lily was going to go back to devs. But. The moment we've been waiting for, predicting for the last few weeks is we see Pete finally making his big moment into the season thus far. We eat, take out Kenton. He strangles him. And in doing so, we see him counting in Russian. And one of the uh, amazing people in the comment section last week, or it might have been two weeks ago, mentioned that, did you hear Pete have kind of like an accent, kind of a Russian accent? And they and, and, and they were true because the Russian, he, he worked for the Russian spies. And we see that moment, him telling Lily that she has a choice, either go to the CIA and have them handle it and be, you know, dealing with this for many, many years of your life. Or you can just go on a run, go to Hong Kong, see your mom, leave leave there. And we see kind of Lily kind of have that moment there. But again, I just thought it was so cool that finally Pete has his moment, as I have predict- predicted for the last, maybe since episode two or three, that he's going to play a big pivotal part in this season. And he saves Lily, you know, again, going back to the conversations in regards to free will and predetermined situations. You know, we see Pete say to Lily that he had a choice because his 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 mission was to protect Sergey and watch over Sergey, which he well, obviously didn't protect him, but he watched over him. And then once Sergey was taken off the table, his his orders were to watch over Lily, but not protect her. But he decided to not do that, which goes back to the conversation we had about Lyndon with the multiple versions of that situation playing out. There might be another situation, another alternate universe where Jamie lives, Kenton lives. We see Pete doesn't save Lily and maybe Lily dies. So that goes back into the whole idea of this multiverse uh, Everest interpretation. But a really good moment for Pete. And I'm glad that he was able to save Lily. And he went against his will and and saved her uh, against his orders. So I thought that was a really good moment. So again, as we kind of finish up this episode, again, I thought this episode was just beautifully done. We see conversations between Ken... uh, 
we've seen Forrest and Katie talking about again the the people in the cave and how back then things didn't change you know but now everything is changing it seems like every hour every month or so the world's changing uh, but they have a little moment there the little Jurassic Park little name drop there but I thought that that was a really good moment between those two characters and as we wrap up we see these beautiful shots uh, again the score was just so amazing in this episode and the shots were just so beautiful and we see you know Lily goes against her will she says I'm gonna stay here I'm not gonna go to devs but we see that she does go to devs we get the beautiful shot with her with the ring above her head uh, and we see the moon behind Amina, the big statue of Amina. Uh, and again, the score is just so beautiful. And she walks up to Dev, speaks to Stuart briefly before walking into the Dev system. It's just seriously one of the best episodes of TV regarding. Again, I love the story that was being told and the messages and the underlying themes and the obviously the acting. But again, to me, the episode was just beautifully done. Again, from the cinematography, the score, the direction by Alex Garland, I thought was just masterful. I can see this being like nominated for one of the best episodes of TV so far this year. It was just such a masterful class of uh, of direction. I thought this was a fantastic episode. And this just sets the stage for next week, guys. So we are gone. We're, we're at the finish line, more or less. Next week, we got the finale. We see Lily's going to be at Devs. What's going to play out? How is everything going to break down? Will we see a different multiverse? Will we see different situations of how the season finale is going to end? What is going to happen next week? I cannot wait to find out, but I want to know what you all are predicting to have uh, what's going to happen next week in the finale. Will we see Lily somehow not die and not be predetermined and mess up devs and, and Forrest and, and, and um, you know Katie's plans? Will we see you know Stewart step up? Will we see maybe other members of the devs project maybe disconnect the plug and, and change things? Uh, so I'm just really excited for the next week's finale again i've been such a big fan of the show i thought this was a great episode and i cannot wait to see what plays out next week so that is my thoughts on the episode recap breakdown review fantastic episode can't recommend it enough if you guys haven't seen it yet definitely do so and um, I'm very excited for next week so with that being said like I said up top make sure you subscribe to this channel hit that bell so you don't miss any of my new videos comment your thoughts below like this video share this video and also some things coming up this weekend I have uh, I'm going to be reviewing that new Netflix film Tiger Trail uh, I do have a watch along for the Joker uh, this Friday at 7 p.m. Central Time I also have a collaboration video talking about Contagion uh, with the people over at Talking a TV podcast so keep an eye for that Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time. So a lot of cool things coming pretty soon, but thank you all for watching this review and we'll see you in the next video.